Good evening everyone, welcome to Financial Management. My name is Arnold Amsalamin and today we're going to discuss all about financial planning and analysis. This is for online presentation 3. Alright, for our presentation we have to select a company. So I selected, or I chose, Philip Morris International. Um, about the company, Philip Morris International Incorporated is an American global cigarette and uh, tobacco company with products sold in over 180 countries outside the United States. It is the most recognized and best-selling product of the company, uh, which is Marlboro. Their aim is to meet the expectations of adults, adult smokers by offering innovative tobacco or tobacco products of the highest quality available in their preferred price category while generating superior returns for shareholders. They operate with integrity and are focused on responsibly delivering long-term sustainable growth. Their aim is to reduce the harm caused from smoking by supporting effective evidence-based regulation of tobacco products and through dip, a deep investment in developing and assessing products with the potential to reduce the risk uh, risk of tobacco or tobacco related disease. All right, so uh, as you can see on the on the left side of their screen um, That's the logo of Philip Morris International All right, so <clears throat> What type of company is Philip Morris International? It's a public company traded as New York uh, Stock Exchange PM All right, so industry it's a tobacco uh, to our tobacco Founded in uh, 1900, so that was 117 years ago. This is according to, or the uh, the source is Wikipedia. Headquarters, its headquarters can be found in New York City. Area served worldwide, excluding the United States. So, uh, so uh, Philip Morris International wants to uh, is has been operating outside the outside uh, United States. Key people: Louis Camilleri, Chairman, and Andre Kalantzopoulos, uh, which is the, uh, who is the CEO. Products: cigarettes, cigars, codantify, uh, fine cutting, rolling tobacco, snuff, rolling papers, and tubes. Its revenue is eighty point one hundred six billion. That is um, in two thousand fourteen. Operating income: eleven point seven hundred two billion dollars. US dollars, which is also in 2014, net income 7.658 billion US dollars, total assets 35.187 US billion, a billion US dollars, total equity 12.629 billion US dollars. Um, number of employees, it has 82,500 as of 2014, and its subsidiaries are some, uh, some Perna. Uh, PMFTC Incorporated, Rothmans, Bensons, and Hedges, uh, Papastros, Philip Morris International, and its website is www.pmi.com. Just in case you want to know more about Philip Morris Incorporated, you can find that on their website. So as you can see, it has 80,000 plus employees around the world, 400 plus are research and development scientists, engineers, and technicians working on smoke-free products. 180 plus markets where our products are sold and as you can see the competitors of um, Philip Morris Incorporated are the following UVV uh, symbolized for uh, symbolizes Universal Corp Alliance One International Reynolds American Incorporated uh, um, Schweitzer Modit International Altheria Group Brit British American Tobacco Industries Turning Point Brands Philip Morris International Incorporated and then Vector Group. All right, so these are the products or the famous products of uh, Philip Morris. So as you can see, and also uh, on the on the uh, right part, the top fifteen international uh, uh, international brands. So some of the products of uh, Philip Morris are considered or are on the top fifteen and uh, considered as the most famous products that is widely used by uh, by cigarette smokers. So top one is Marlboro, and then we have l and uh, Philip Morris, Bond Street, Chesterfield, uh, Parliament, and like. 
so the top one or the the highest uh, is Malboro all right so again what we're going to discuss today is all about financial planning so what is this financial planning what is it, uh, what's it's all about what is uh, its objective so first we have to define what financial planning is financial planning is the task of determining how a business will afford to achieve its strategic goals and objectives uh, according to uh, Investopedia, financial planning or financial plan is a comprehensive evaluation of an investor's current and future financial state by using currently known variables to predict future cash flows, asset values, and withdrawal, uh, withdrawal plans. According to CFP.net, the standards of professional conduct define financial planning as the process of determining whether and how an individual can meet life goals through the proper management of financial resources. So um, usually a company creates a financial plan immediately after the vision and objectives have been set. The financial plan um, describes each of the activities, resources, equipment, and materials that are needed to achieve these objectives as well as the time frames involved. All right, so what are the objectives of financial planning? So we have four here. Number one, uh, determining capital requirements. So uh, guys, this will depend upon factors like cost of current and fixed assets, proportional uh, expenses, and long-range planning. So um, capital requirements have to be looked with both aspects, short-term and long-term requirements. Number two, we have to determine the capital structure. So the capital structure is the composition of capital, the relative kind and proportion of capital required in the business. This includes decision of debt equity ratio, both short term and long term. Number three, we have framing financial policies. Uh, framing financial policies uh, regard, with the regards to cash control, lending, borrowings, and etc. Number four, and then the last one, utilized scarce resources. All right, everyone, so a finance manager ensures that the scarce financial resources are maximally, are maximally utilized in the best possible manner, at least cost in order to get maximum returns on investment. So that are the objectives of financial planning. So what is the importance of financial planning? Why is it so important? Why is it part of the financial... Uh, financial management <clears throat> so the importance can be outlined as number one so adequate funds have to be insured number two financial planning helps in ensuring a reasonable balance between outflow and inflow of funds so that the st stability is maintained number three financial planning ensures that the suppliers of funds are easily investing in companies which exercise financial planning number four Financial planning helps in making growth and expansion programs, which helps in long run survival of the company. Number five, financial planning re reduces uncertainties with the regards to changing market trends, which can be faced easily through enough funds. And number six, financial planning helps in reducing the uncertainties, which can be a hindrance to the growth of the company. This helps ensuring the stability and provision profitability and concern. So I think number six, we're going to focus on number six today. All right, so uh, financial planning has a process. So it has a six process. So the number, uh, the first step or the first process is to determine the car uh, current financial situation. So assessment or action plan situation from the uh, past balance sheet or audit. So for today, um, I'm going to use the summary of finance, financial ratio to determine the current uh, the current financial situation of Phyllis, uh, Philip Morris Incorporated. Number two, the second, uh, the second process is to develop your financial goals. Uh, so we're going to use forecasting and put the data of investment. So I'm going to, to show you the, uh, the forecasted income statement and balance sheet that I created. Number three, identify alternative courses of action. So we're, we're going to use uh, action plan for that. Use resources, project, bad, uh, budget plan, or loan. And then we're going to uh, evaluate, consider, or assess, which is the fourth process. And then we're going to create and implement our financial plan. 
And the last step is we're going to review and revise the financial plan. So it's a cycle. So the financial process is a cycle. So after reviewing or revising the financial plan, it goes back to, the, uh, to determine the current financial situation. If, if, the, uh, if reviewing and revising the financial plan is uh, effective or uh, we meet the, uh, the financial goals of the company. So we're going to move on for the first step, which is the determine current financial situation. All right, so in the first step of the financial pro uh, planning process, we will determine the current financial situation with the regards to the income, savings, living expenses, and debts. Preparing uh, a list of current asset and debt balances or amounts spent for various items give, uh, gives a foundation for financial planning activities. So for today, what I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to show you are, uh, is the uh, summary of financial ratio that I created which is part of uh, assignment number three okay so let's uh, let's move on so the first one financial summary financial uh, financial analysis so the source is Yahoo and Go uh, Google Finance all right so as you can see here on the current ratio our ratio uh, on to uh, in, in, in 2015 we have a 1.03 1.02 in 2014 and uh, 0.99 so as you can see we have here the uh, this is the current ratio of Philip Morris International and then we also have the industry or the comp we use the uh, competitors uh, ratio so we have 1.03 which indicates that uh, it indicates that the company may have a slightly a uh, slight difficulty meeting its current obligations so low values, however, do not indicate a critical problem. So we have here 103, which is not really that low. If Philip Morris International has a good term, uh, has a, a good long-term prospects, it may be able to borrow against those prospects to meet its current uh, to meet current obligations. So it went high, high from 2013, which is 0.99 to 1.03. So I think Philip Morris International is um, is having a slight difficulty, not a big problem, only a slight difficulty, meeting its uh, meeting its current obligations. So we also have the quick ratio or acid test ratio. So from 0 0.41, it went up to 0 0.48. So indicating that uh, the company cannot currently fully pay back its current liabilities. It's a bad sign for investors and uh, for partner for investors and partners so it's um, uh, Philip Morris International um, did not do quite well uh, for the quick ratio or asset test ratio next one uh, we have financial leverage ratio so we have debt to equity debt to total assets and total capitalizations uh, so first let's uh, work on the debt to equity from 2015, we have a 2.15, 2 which decre um, which uh, which is quite not good because it decreased from 3.56, uh, it decreased to 2.15. So the debt uh, it generally means that a company has been aggressive in uh, financing its uh, its growth with debt. So this can result in volatile earnings as a result of the additional interest expense. So we, uh, for the debt to total assets, we have from 0 0.73 in 2013, and um, it, it has been consistent from 0 0.84 to 2014, and then also 2015, we have 0 0.84, which suggests that um, uh, British American Tobacco PLC is progressively becoming less dependent on, on debt to grow their business, comparing to the Philip Morris International, all right? Okay, so total capitalization, which is 0 0.74. So this results gain relatively decreased from 0 0.87 in the year 2013 to 0 0.74. So unlike its industry or competitor, which is um, I used British British American tobacco, uh, tobacco for this one, which is 0 0.86, which is quite low, uh, which is quite higher than uh, uh, 0 0.74 gained by uh, Philip Morris Incorporated. 
Next one, coverage ratio. So the current coverage ratio of Philip Morris International, as we can see here, is 10.54 in the year two, uh, 2015. It decreased from 13.89 in the year 2013, as you can see here. Uh, it's, uh, its industry or competitor's ratio is 10.44 to 10.66. So the lower the ratio, uh, the weaker the company's financial strength is. And the higher the company's debt burden, debt burden and the greater the possibility of ba bankruptcy or default. So a lower ICR, interest coverage ratio, means less earnings are available to meet interest payments and that the business is more vulnerable to increase its in interest rates. Okay, next one. For the activity ratio, we have receivable turnover, average collection period, industry competitor, uh, uh, payable turnover, payable turnover in days, and inventory turnover, and total asset turnover. Um, all right, so for the receivable turnover, as we can see here, we have a 9.65 from 8.81, it decreased to 7.43, and then it, um, uh, it, it increased to 9.65 unlike its industry or competitors ratio which is 4.34 so uh, the Philip Morris International receivable turnover for the year 2015 which is 9.65 uh, 9 uh, 9 indicates uh, that PMI was quickly in collecting outstanding cash balances from its customers during an accounting period so the higher the tone, uh, turnover the more efficient is the management of debtors or more liquid the debtors are the better the company is in terms of collecting their accounts receivable so for the period we have 38 days here okay unlike before uh, which is 45 okay and then um, 49 and then it fastened up so it became uh, 38 days so payable turnover from 8.17 it decreased to 7.27 so it significant, significantly decreased from its ratio performance in 2013, as you can see here. So the ratio measures the number of times the company pays its suppliers during a specific accounting period. So by looking at the current ratio, its low ratio signifies that PMI is slow in paying its suppliers. So from 8.17, it, it, uh, it, uh, it shows that PMI is really slow paying its suppliers. So so from 45 which is the fastest one it decreased into 50 which indicates uh, slow payment all right so inventory turnover uh, PMI inventory turnover ratio for the year 2015 as you can see here 1.07 uh, inventory turnover ratio determines the ability of a company to manage their inventory levels it measures the percentage of inventories the company current currently has on hand to support the current amount of revenue a higher inventory turnover means the company has light inventory therefore the company spent less money on storage write downs and obsolete inventory if the inventory is too light so if the inventory is too light it may affect sales because the company may not have enough to meet the demand all right, so as you can see here, for the total asset turnover from 0 0.82, it decreased to 0 0.79 uh, in 2015, which um, indicates that the business should either utilize its assets in a more efficient manner or just, you know, sell them. All right, so for profitability ratio, we have gross profit margin, net profit margin, return on investment, return on equity. So everyone for this for this uh, for this financial ratio analysis, we're going to focus on PMI, and then uh, its comparison to the industry or competitors ratio. But for my explanation, I'm going to focus more on uh, uh, on PMI since we're going to create a financial planning for this company. All right. So from uh, for gross profit margin, we have from 0 0.67 it decreased to 0 0.65. So. Uh, this shows that gross profit margin, uh, gross profit, 
exceeding production costs. So gross profit, uh, gross margin is a good indication of how profitable a company is at the most fundament, uh, fundamental level, how efficiently a company uses its resources, materials, and labor. So the higher the percentage, the more the company return, retains on each dollar of sales to service its other costs and obligations. So the better the company is thought to control costs. However, um, there's a slight decrease from a uh, slight decrease in percentage here. So this is 65% of for the gross profit margin. So I just multiplied it by 100% to make it um, uh, in decimal. Unlike, unlike its industry or competitors ratio from 0 0.78, it decreased to 0 0.75. So, uh, however, it's it's quite higher than the gross profit margin earned by PMI. Okay, for the net profit margin, we have from 0 0.28, it uh, decreased again from 0 0.23. So, net profit margin uh, is a key ratio of profit for profitability it is very useful when comparing companies in similar industries so a higher a net profit margin means that the company is more efficient in converting sales into actual profit so if you look at the case of PMI's net profit margin here um, it relatively decreased from 2013 to 2015 so which indicates that PMI is having difficulties turning sales into profit so okay so return on investment ROI so we have 0 0.23 to 0 0.20 so our uh, which what is return on investment so ROI measures how effectively the firms uses its capital to generate profit so the higher the ROI the better so however by looking at PMI's ratio performance within three years it relatively decreased meaning that the investment gains compare unfavorably to investment costs so from 0 0.23 to 0 0.20 however it's quite higher than its industry or competitors ratio from 0 0.17 to 0 0.14 uh, all right so we have the last one return on equity so the philip morris international's return on equity for the year 2015 is 0 0.52 which is half uh, from 2013 so this result is still desirable however knowing that some factors contributed to it. So the higher the ROE, or return on equity, but a higher ROE does not necessarily mean better financial performance of the company, okay? So the higher ROE can be the result of high financial leverage, but too high financial leverage is dangerous for a company's solvency. So it's, it's I think it's, for me, it's, it's good that it decreased from 1.14, which is, which is okay, which is a good indication uh, to 0 0.52 which is not that critical or it, it, it does it it doesn't mean that it's uh, it will endanger or compromise the company all right okay so next process is to develop our uh, uh, our financial goals or develop your financial goals so you should periodically or uh, analyze your financial values and goals uh, this involves identifying how you feel about the money and why you feel that way so the purpose of this analysis is to, um, to differentiate your needs from your wants so specific financial goals are vital to financial planning so others can suggest financial goals for you however you must decide which goals to pursue so your financial goals can range from spending all your current current income to developing an extensive savings and investment program for your future for uh, future financial security so after after viewing the fina uh, uh, financial ratio analysis so based on that we're going to create now our financial goals so we, we must make sure that the, our financial goals are realistic so uh, assuming that I am the owner or a financial financial uh, financial specialist so we're go uh, financial an analyst so we're going to create financial goals so as you can see here we're going to use forecasted income statement so this is my financial goals for the income statement so number one we have 25 first uh, percent increase in total revenue exceeding the total re revenue earned in the past few years so as you can see here above so our revenue in 2015 is 26 uh, million seven hundred ninety four dollars uh, thousand 
and then uh, forecasted is thir uh, thir uh, 33 million for 192,050 and then 50% uh, assuming 50% uh, increase in cost of revenue so from 26,794,000 uh, I'm sorry, so that's 9,365,000, uh, 50% increase of it, so it will become 10,769,075. Uh, 10, and then we have uh, 7,731 increase for operating expense, so that will be 1,845,025 quarterly for selling in general admin. So we have here, I assigned here 7,381,000. Um, if we're going to break it down, uh, um, we have 25 quarterly for the depreciation. So 25 times 4, that will be 100, 100 so 100 million. And then 62.50 quarterly for uh, unusual expense. So uh, 62.50 times 4, so that will be 250 million. Okay. I'm sorry, that is 250,000. I'm sorry. So that is 100,000 and then 250,000. All right. And then there will be a 10% decrease in interesting uh, interest expense. So you have here 16 points uh, interest expense. Uh, assume, uh, assuming that we calculated the 10% decrease of it. And then income tax expense assumed to be the same last year, and then income tax expense. So we we have one hundred point eighty, and then interest in tax expense will be one hundred point eighty as well. So if we're going to sum sum it up, so um, uh, ten thousand uh, point uh, ten million, sorry, seven hundred sixty nine thousand point seventy five plus seven uh, seven. Uh, seven million three hundred eighty one plus one hundred thousand plus two hundred fifty so we're going to have eighteen million five hundred thousand point seventy five all right and then assuming that minority is a minority interest is one hundred negative one hundred forty five so we have here a negative one hundred forty five thousand and one hundred four one hundred five thousand for the equity in affiliates number seven assuming that we have fifty thousand uh, for the preferred dividend which is higher than the previous year so we we have zero for uh, for that one and then assuming that for EPS we have a la uh, the last quarter which is one so we have here one which is which is not uh, shown in our income statement however uh, uh, the major part or the major uh, what we're focusing here is is the increase in total revenue, uh, increase in cost revenue, and what will happen to that, and also the decrease in interest expense. Okay, so we also have our financial goals. So we uh, created a forecasted forecasted balance sheet. So number one, we have a twenty five increase in cash and equivalents exceeding cash earned for four years. So we have here for cash and equivalents, we have three. Uh, three million four hundred seventeen thousand U.S. dollars. So we are going to calculate twenty-five percent increase of that. So we're going to have four million two hundred seventy-one point twenty-five, uh, seventy-one thousand point twenty-five. We're going to have ten increase, ten percent increase in accounts receivable. No increase in inventory to avoid future risks. Uh, no prepaid expenses assumed to be um, number five. Number five, uh, assumed to be last, uh, uh, the same la class year, so we're going to emit that. Um, number six, 10% increase for property plant equipment to increase efficiency. So you will see that here on the property plant equipment total gross. So we increase that 10%. And then 20% decrease in amount owed to creditors. Uh, okay, so that that will be in the accumulated depreciation uh, that can be seen in accumulated depreciation and then so we're going to calculate the total assets so from 33 million nine hundred fifty six thousand so we have now our total asset for uh, for the year 2016 is 36 million two hundred sixty four point seventy five uh sixty four thousand point seventy five 
All right, so uh, uh, there will be a 10% increase in long-term debt. So uh, our debt will going to have, uh, is going to increase by 10%, and also 10% increase in retained earnings. So long-term debt. So we owed, uh, we owed, uh, we owed money from our creditors. Of, uh, so we're going to use that money for the uh, for the uh, example for the 10% increase for for the expansion of our property, plant, or upgrades plant equipment to increase uh, increase efficiency so we're going uh, we're going to borrow money again assuming that we're going to borrow money okay so after 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 creating financial goals uh, now we're going to move on with uh, process uh, three to six which is identify alternative courses of action um, next one is evaluate and then we're going to implement the financial plan and more monitoring financial needs. So we're going to monitor that by uh, revising and reviewing uh, the financial plan. So the courses of action, as what I've said earlier, so we're uh, we we're mainly focusing on increasing our revenue, decrease in interest expense, and increase in uh, co uh, cost of cost of goods sold. All right. So uh, for for identifying courses of action, so we have number one, increase your revenue. Uh, so we have, uh, how are we going to do that? How are we, how are we going to fulfill or reach, uh, reach that specific goal, which is to increase our revenue by? How many percent was that? Um, again, 25%. So how are we going to do that? We have the four, uh, five course of action. Uh, number one, increase your marketing. So an obvious way to increase your sales is to boost your uh, boost our marketing so uh, PMI should conduct marketplace research to learn which message speak to their target audience so run run ads and promotions in limited locations and check the results before spending the entire budget for this one so incorporate some way to monitor marketing communication such as using coupons electronic codes or website traffic um, uh, statistics so that is for increasing the market and number two we have to review our pricing strategy so if uh, if PMI's product or service is price sensitive pay special attention to the uh, pricing strategies find out what competition is uh, is charging and raise or lower PMI's prices based on your goals uh, so lowering the prices can increase revenues to make up for lower margins so raising uh, raising PMI's uh, products prices it can create a higher perceived value in the minds of consumers and increase their margins. So raising the prices can also increase the revenues without increasing sales. Also, so we have number three, expand uh, distribution channels. So changing where P, uh, PMI sell their product can significantly boost uh, their sales and revenues without requiring any changes to their marketing or pricing so perform a careful study of the effects of using online selling direct mail wholesalers uh, retailers distributors and outside sales reps to project how each method can affect their sales volumes prof uh, profit margins and total profits so in some cases new distribution channels require marketing support so we have number four diversify your other uh, uh, diversify offerings so if PMI is a mature company it might be time to add new products and services to create exponential growth so uh, if they feel saturated uh, the market uh, to the marketplace determine the products your target customers buy that you're not selling and then that you think they uh, you can uh, PMI can make and market profitably for profitably so they might need to replace all products uh, they might need to replace all products with new ones so this might result in decrease in sales but higher revenues if the replacement products has a higher price so that's another option and then we have the number uh, the last option this which is develop relationships so the more people they can get to promote their product or service the more sales and revenues they will have so look for business that don't compete with you but which have the same target customers and develop cross promotions 
For example, if uh, if they sell uh, if they sell sports apparels, sponsored golf and tennis instructors, uh, instructors and youth league coaches to wear and promote your line. So partner with charities to get them to promote you to their supporters. Use social media programs to build to build a following uh, generated by uh, satisfied customers. So I I will be assuming that. Uh, PMI will uh, will use an innovative an innovative way innovative way of uh, connecting or developing relationship with their target customers with regards to this one. All right, and then we have number uh, we have the second one, which is increase in cost of goods sold. So first of all, cost of goods sold is the accumulated total of all costs used. To create a product or service which has been sold so this costs fall into the general subcategories of direct labor materials and overhead so in a, in a service business the cost of goods sold is considered to be labor payroll taxes and benefits of those people who generate bill, uh, bill, billable hours and in a retail or wholesale business the cost of goods sold is likely to be merchandise that was bought from a manufacturer, so we have here increase in uh, goods sold as I as I as I uh, stated here. So an increase in good, cost of goods sold, uh, cost of goods sold may be due to rising prices, r a rising prices for supplies. Even though this uh, this was included in my financial goal, so assuming that there is an increase in goods sold. So uh, by contrast, uh, note. Improvements in cost controls, productivity, or adaptation of new technology can bring the COGS percentage down. So, uh, if we are going to increase on our revenue, of course, it will affect increase of goods sold. So, it is so, uh, because it says here that it is the total cost used to create in, uh, create a product or service which has been sold. So, if we're going to increase and in, uh, increase our revenue, we have to risk also uh, our cost of goods sold. So. Okay, so next one, decrease in interest expense. So interest expense on the income statement represents the cost of borrowing money from banks, bond investors, and other sources to meet short-term working capital needs, add property, pl uh, add property, plan, and equipment to the balance sheet, acquire competitors, or increase in inventory. So how are we going to decrease that? So for business, there are asset incentive intensive an increase in interest rates can be a major headwind. So headwind means problem. So reducing earnings the same way they benefit banks and insurance uh, companies. So the primary defense of a firm, firm's management, is to lock in debt maturities as far into the future as possible so that they can continue to pay the lowest imagin imaginable interest rates. So this is our act. Uh, so this is PMI's action in order for them to decrease the interest expense. So there will be increase in revenue, and then we're going to borrow money since we're going to. Uh, uh, so because our target is to increase in revenue. So how are we going to do that? So we have to create more products, and we're going to uh, exert more effort. So we're going to acquire more service to that. So we're going to uh, borrow some money just in case just in case that we'll be needing it so how are we going to decrease that so we have to lock in debt maturities uh, as far into future ASAP so that we can pay to the lowest imagin imaginable interest rate so as you can see the financial goals that I created and the course of action um, is uh, quite connected to each other okay so uh, for for number three for the uh, uh, course of action we also are going to um, have a budget plan for that so i created here a simple budget plan assuming that um, the uh, P, uh, philip morris intern uh, incorporated is going to use this budget plan so as you can see we have here general uh, general and admin administrative expenses um, marketing expenses uh, we have here the items and then the description and then the year amount the year that we're going to uh, acquire or use this and then we also have its corresponding amount so we have also automobile expenses and then technology expenses and other expenses uh, 
we also included it included it here so total expense so seven uh, seven million seven hundred thirty one thousand which can be found in our income statement so as you can see here we have seven million if we're going to sum the uh, sum this up the total total uh, of uh, the selling or general administrative expenses so I, I made a breakdown uh, and then we're going to add the other expenses which is the amortization and then the uh, unusual expense so I, I, I've included it here in, on this part and this part so the total expense will be seven million seven hundred thirty one thousand and then we're going to have a project which is a factory expansion for the year 2016 amounting to three million dollars three million US dollars okay so budget plan is also part of uh, of financial planning okay so we are going to have a breakdown of this factory expansion uh, uh, amounting to three million dollars using the capex okay so what is capex so capex or capital expenditure are funds used by a company to acquire or upgrade physical assets such as property industrial buildings or equipment it is often used to undertake new projects or investments by, uh, by the firm so as I uh, included here in my budget plan so we have here a project or an upgrade which is a factory expansion which is three million three million dollars and then we're going to have a breakdown or we are going to have the expenses that is uh, going to be used for the factory expansion so we have here for the building expenses for the building total is eight hundred thousand dollars salaries for the staffs and benefits for the expansion we have here seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and then for the supplies and equipments we have here it's uh um one million two hundred twenty five thousand dollars and then product transport uh, 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 the subtotal is two hundred twenty-five thousand. So we also have uh, we also included in our capex the description of each of each um, of each item. I'm sorry, this is description, not year. And then we also have the quantity. How how many do we need? How are how many or how much do we need? And then the cost per uh, per quantity. And then we calculated the total. So the total project cost in uh, in million US dollars is three million US dollars, which is here uh, shown in our budget plan. And we also have the operating expen uh, expense expenditure. I'm sorry, which is the opposite of capex. So if capex are fund used by the company for the upgrade operational expenditure or opex, on the other hand, is the money a company spends on ongoing day-to-day -day basis in order to run a business or a system so I included here for example for the current year uh, December 31 uh, 2016 for the income that is thirty three million four hundred ninety two thousand fifty so I included all all the all the expenses uh, all the values here in uh, in my income statement so as you can see here the net profit will be thirteen million nine hundred eighty-three thousand point seven three. The total expenses, on the other hand, which is fourteen million nine hundred ninety-one point seventy-five, is the result from our income statement from here. So, as you can see, the operating income is fourteen thousand nine hundred ninety-one. Uh, fourteen million. I'm sorry, nine hundred ninety-one thousand point seventy-five, and we have the breakdown here. Um, using the operating expenditure so just to be clear where it did uh, 14 million and hundred ninety one point seventy five which is operating um, uh, expense came from so this is the breakdown okay so next course of action will be uh, shown in the contingency plan which I created for PMI so assuming that uh, uh, this contingency plan will be used by PMI. So what is a contingency plan? So it is a course of action designed to help an organization respond effectively to a significant future event or situation that may or may, may not happen. 
So a contingency plan is sometimes referred to as as plan B because it can be also used as an alternative for action if expected results fail to materialize. So contingency planning is a component of business continuity, disaster recovery, and risk management. So restoring operations is under uh, disaster recovery. So uh, let's assume that something will happen or just in case that something happens to uh, the factory expansion or, uh, or to the building that is currently uh, existing for operation. So um, it might uh, be knocked down by natural disasters such as flood, uh, which is our first event. So our priority is uh, very high, so we have a budget for that, which is one million. And then the second one is factory damages caused by fire, which is also a high priority. And we also have its corresponding budget, which is 850,000 US dollars. So the total plan cost for our contingency plan uh, is 1,850,000 US dollars. Okay. All right. So after, uh, after the course of actions, so we're going to evaluate that. Evaluate and implement our financial plan. Now, how are we going to do that? So we have uh, options here. Possible evaluating me methods can be as follows. So the first one is the net worth. So one of the main evaluations the financial department conducts is an assessment of company's net worth, which is highlighted in the company's annual report with the hopes of attracting potential investors and stockholders. The net worth of a business is the total sum of the liabilities subtracted from the own asset values of the business. If the company has a negative worth due to outstanding banking loans and uh, unpaid taxes, the financial evaluation may lead analysts to create a plan to lower the liabilities and increase the assets. So we have first net worth for evaluating our financial plan. So we have number two, which is monthly expense budgets. So a business has a monthly operational budget that shows how much the business has in income and how much it has in expenses. So a financial evaluation of the company can include analyzing the monthly budget to see how the business is spending money. So to earn a profit, the company must spend less than it's earning to have a monthly profit. So one financial evaluation technique is to add up if everything the company is spending on a monthly basis and compare it to the income so financial planning and adjustment may be needed if the business has a negative income each month so we can show that uh, the monthly operational budget in uh, quarterly uh, in every site in uh, every fina uh, financial site uh, whether it is Google Finance Yahoo Finance so we're just going to select the uh, the company that we're um, conducting our business plan and then uh, check the expenses or the operational budget uh, in each quarter. Okay, and then we also have market growth and potential. So the financial standing of a company can be improved by changing the company's approach to the market. So financial financial analysts may spend time analyzing the market in terms of its growth potential for a particular products or service the business offers. If the company already has many direct competitors on the market, the financial analysts may see earnings potential if the company takes the product development or service in a slightly different direction. So this type of financial evaluation technique is a pre-planning technique. Okay. Alright, so next one we're going to um, uh, implement uh, the actions the course of actions okay so how are we going to do that when implementing a financial plan so we're finished evaluating it so you will probably need to rely on uh, expertise of few specialists so um, we're the firm is not just going to evaluate and implement the financial plan on its own so it's going to need help from few specialists so we have here professionals that can help out draft legal documents find the right service for the needs and help leverage a specific program or opportunities so we have CPA for that 
insurance and broker brokerage services and estate planning lawyers so if ever that we're going to implement financial our financial plan then we're going to be seeking help from specialists okay next one the last process so we have uh, reviewing and revising financial plan so how are we going to do that all right so uh, changing the financial plan too often will be as bad as not having a financial plan at all so then again there is no ideal fixed period after which reviewing a, a plan can be recommended so it's it is up to the uh, it is up to the firm to decide on how often to review the plan so every six months or up to, up to the firm or every two years or every five years right so in the case of uh, PMI so we have uh, uh, we have the forecasted in income statement which is for 2016 so it would be better if we're going to revise it or review it every six months so the factors that will guide you regarding how often you should review your plan are so we have uh, uh, financial products here so the type of financial products that you have invested in so if there are products that are maturing at short intervals then you may have to review your plan more often and then we also have the goals so the type of goals that you have set so if you have many short-term goals as each goal is achieved you need to review your financial plan and also we have the per personal factors so if the number of your dependents increases or decreases you need to review your, your uh, plan as well so if your income increases or decreases you need to review your plan and so on and so forth so these are the factors or the triggers that we need to review um, our financial plan so financial products our goals and then we also have our personal factors okay and then we also ha uh, rev um, we're going to revise our financial plan or how are we going to do uh, to do that so um, uh, decide if all goals that you have sold uh, you have set are still relevant so have you lost interest in achieving any of them so if if yes so we need to revise them uh, and then um, if no then we have to stick with our goals and then we can also add some fresh goals if ever that we want to so we have to revise our financial goal okay number two so decide if the time frames that you set for the goals are still the same or you had previously decided so we have set that for two for the whole uh, 2016 so if that exceeds the, uh, if, uh, exceeds the time exceeds the year so we have to change our financial plan again and then are the financial instruments that you choose to meet your goals going as per plan so uh, if our financial instruments doesn't uh, help or uh, are not are not contributing that well so we have to uh, we have to revise again our financial plan all right so how are we going to reconstruct our financial plan so modifying the uh, the plan the financial plan involves number one so deleting goals that you have already achieved or do not wish to achieve any more from your plan it also involves adding fresh goals to it all right and we have number two uh, if if exceeds the time as what I've said a while ago uh, after reviewing the financial plan so we have to change it if it's necessary so from 2016 if it exceeds 2016 or a month or six months we have to add more to that okay and then number uh, and then the last one is investing and disinvesting in financial instruments if necessary okay so there you have it we performed uh, all the six process for the uh, financial pro planning process so let us review again so the first process is determine current financial situation so what we did is we um, uh, use the financial ratio analysis to analyze the current financial situation of Phyllis, uh, Philip Morris and incorporated the second step or the second process is we develop our financial goals use, using uh, our forecasted income statement and forecasted ba uh, balance sheet okay and then uh, the third process is to identify alternative courses of actions and and each financial goal has its own action and and we we must make sure that each of these actions will be performed in order for us to achieve our our goals 
Okay, so we I already explained that as well. Number four, uh, evaluate, uh, assess, and impl uh, implement our financial plan. So we also have our evaluating methods and also who are we going to seek, uh, seek with in order for us to implement before implementing our financial plan. So we have professionals for that. And then the last process, which is review and revise the financial plan. So we also have the methods and also the factors affecting, um, affecting the financial plan. So it answers the question, why are we going to re uh, revise the financial plan? So are, are, are there going to be uh, future changes? Okay. So that's the end of my presentation. All the, uh, all the <coughs> financial ratio analysis, its summary, and also the CAPEX and OPEX are uploaded um, on the AME portal site. Okay. I hope that you understand my presentation. Again, this is Arnold M. Suleman taking Master's in Business Administration. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.